tra la la pom pom diga diga do Here's a question just for you Fuddle daddle diddle dee you pee you Where, when, which, why, how, and who If that's asking such a lot Shrimp up a piddly pom tick tack tot Then just simply Guess what, guess what Guess what? Pa 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 pa. With Jan Rubesh. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, how lovely oh. oh well, my Christmas tree is in place, but I don't think I'll ever finish with my Christmas cards. How lovely are your branches? They are green when summer days are bright. They are green when winter snows light. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Ha-ra-ra-ra, ha-ra-ra. It seems December comes and everything on the radio is just one long Christmas broadcast. Hey, did you know that the very, very first broadcast ever, the very first radio show ever, was a Christmas broadcast? And it was made possible by a Canadian inventor, a great Canadian inventor. And you probably never heard of him. Maybe I can show you what he looked like. He wore a moustache. Like this. And of course in those days, everyone wore a beard. And he wore spectacles of this kind. Of course, he had a curly hair, so I'll have to use a wig. Oh yes, he was great in more ways than one. He was great around his waist. So I'll just put a pillow in my trousers. I don't think I'll ever get it in. Oh, I didn't tell you his name. His name was Reginald Aubrey Fessenden. And he was the first man ever to figure out how to send the voice through the air and catch it again on a radio. He worked hard for years on his invention. And when finally he was ready to send out the very first show, the holiday season was just coming up. So he decided that the very first broadcast will be a very Merry Christmas program. Everything seemed to be working all right. Maybe one more check on the tower that was to send out the signals. To do that, Mr. Fessenden had to climb through a little opening under the tower. Guess what happened? Poor Mr. Fessenden got stuck in the opening. He wiggled and wriggled, and help, help, he shouted. His friends rushed to him and struggled and struggled, but could not get him out. Luckily, one of his helpers had a great idea. He took Mr. Fessenden's coat off, his vest and his shirt, and his trousers too and oiled and greased Mr. Fessenden from top to bottom. Mr. Fessenden popped from the hole like a cork from a bottle. Meanwhile, back at the studio, Mr. Fessenden's assistant had already begun the broadcast by playing a famous composition by Handel on a phonograph. He was getting more and more nervous by the minute the program had to go on, Fessenden or no Fessenden. Now was the assistant's turn to sing a Christmas song. Oh! 
<laughs> Dear ladies and gentlemen, on this solemn occasion of our first broadcast, I'm sorry to inform you that you have to be contented with my singing and playing. It seems that my assistant uh, uh, took suddenly ill. Best to you all from uh, Aubrey Reginald Fessenden. <laughs> 